I have four months to win Australia's biggest game competition. But there's one problem, I've never done this before, and I might have just made a huge mistake. It all started when the Australian STEM game competition was announced earlier this year. It's pretty much just a competition for kids like me who are stuck in school but like to make games. And I guess I fall under that category. I mean, I'm not really a kid anymore. Who cares? I'm gonna destroy everyone because I'm up against 10 year olds. No, Melted, that's not really true. Why? Oh, uh, well, I bet the games I made last year weren't even that good. Holy <laughs> Oh yeah, it's also the biggest game competition in the whole of Australia. So instead of wasting time catching crocodiles and avoiding the spider rain like most Aussies, I'm going to spend my time trying to win this thing. But to do this, we needed an idea. Every year, the competition has a new theme, which contestants have to use in their games. This year, that theme is Journey. And as soon as I saw this, my mind instantly went to a book I remember reading a while ago. It's called Into Thin Air, and it was about a man's journey to the top of Mount Everest. I mostly found it interesting because of the amount of work and inventory they needed to finally reach the top. And I mean, that's a pretty big journey. So that was my first big idea. But how is this game actually going to be played? Hmm, let's spin the wheel to see. And... Oh no, it's landed on 2D platform and no way. That's actually what I'm best at making. Wait, don't click off just because it's another game dev making a platformer. Don't worry, because this game is different. Instead of just being platforming, I really wanted to tune into the thought process behind climbing Mount Everest. I wanted to give the player heaps of options between which items they should choose to use in their tiny inventory space, and also let death be part of the gameplay. But I'll tell you more about that later. Alright, let's start making this thing. In the first day, I got a movement system, all coded fully by me. Just, just close your eyes real quick, I just gotta... There we go. This is already fun. Next, I made shops, NPCs, and an inventory system for the player. Unity nerds set the video speed to 0 0.2 times to see how it all works. And everyone else, just ignore this section. I'll play some nice music for you. Now the basic code is all done, but that looks trash. So I brought in my friend Paula to help me out. We decided to try pixel art this time because, well, it just looks cool. I started by designing the player and I didn't make him look cartoony because we want a much more serious feel for this game. And we also need some shops, so I made this tent looking design that will hold our shopkeepers. Now they can sell stuff and look cool doing it. But wait a minute, there aren't any shopkeepers. I guess it's up to me once again. So I just made this awesome looking guy and we can just put him right in the little tent. No one is buying from him. Well, this is all fine, but um, I think it's a little out of place considering the whole map is just white squares. It was time to start making the mountain. Ooh. We both started working tirelessly, designing heaps of background stuff, like these icy walls, floor tiles, and some icicles. It took a while, but who cares, because this game looks so cool. Or does it? That's right, now this is my favourite part. I started by making some wind and snow particles. Oh no, I think I added too many. Actually, that kind of works. So I guess we have snowstorms now too. Then I added some lighting details, like bloom, which basically just makes light look cool. I also added on some other random post-processing effects, and I think it looks awesome. And as good as this looks, it begins to get very boring after a while because I actually haven't added any of the gameplay I promised at the start. So it's time to do all that. Now if you were actually paying attention at the start, I mean, I don't blame you if you weren't. It's pretty easy to get distracted looking at someone as handsome as Anyway, uh, I mentioned earlier that there was a very special death system. So the idea is that when you die in this game, you don't actually die. Well, you do. But you respawn as a different character and your old character's body stays wherever you died and holds all of the items you previously had. So if you were to get back to your body, you could get your inventory back, which makes death kind of a good thing. But there are no items. So let's code some. Wait. Oh no. Well, it's a good thing this video is sponsored by Brilliant. That's right, if you're like me and use AI to do all the hard work for you, then it's time to start learning programming for yourself. And using Brilliant is the perfect way to do this. Brilliant offers heaps of courses. I mean, I can't even fit them all into this segment. But if you are interested in math, science, programming, or anything, you need to try out Brilliant. I've been doing their programming courses, and it's amazing how much you can learn. You'll get familiar with Python, learn how to solve problems like a developer, break down complex issues into chunks of code, and develop an intuition for computer logic. Brilliant's courses are created by former Google developers, scientists, and professionals from all over the world, and they make learning fun. Try to get the highest streak or make it to the top of the leaderboard in your rank while being taught important stuff. So if you want to try Brilliant, 
Scan this QR code or use the link in the description to get a free trial and a 20% discount on Brilliant's premium plan. And make sure to thank them for sponsoring your favourite YouTuber. I know I am. Speaking of which, you should probably press that subscribe button and like too. Okay, well now that I've learnt how to code, we can finally start adding these items. I started with these oxygen tanks that let you breathe air. But these oxygen tanks weigh you down and will make you slower, as well as slowly running out of oxygen. If they run out, you can drop them on the floor or off the edge if you're a bit rude. But they are essential if you want to climb past 6,500 meters, because on Mount Everest, it's hard to get oxygen at these heights. The next item is the tent, and I know it looks very boring, but if you don't want to freeze into an ice block, then you're going to want one. These tents can be placed wherever you need and let you sleep and replenish your energy as well as keep you safe in storms. Well, not all storms. And this is where we got up to this month before I needed to make this video. But I do plan on making this a series about how I'm going to hopefully win this crazy competition. And hopefully you'll subscribe to join me on my journey to becoming the biggest young game dev. Next video, we'll try to get a more polished version, add all the items and add in-game events. What do you call a mountain made of kittens? A meowton. What's a mountain's favourite book? Climb and p He's right behind me, isn't he? Uh, I should probably get going. What happens when you reach the summit of a mountain? It's all downhill from there. How do mountains hear so well? It's all thanks to mountaineers.